बच्चों लेट अस टॉक अबाउट इफेक्टिवनेस ऑफ मॉनेटरी पॉलिसी इन एन ओपन इकोनॉमी यूजिंग द आईएसएल एंड बीपी फ्रेमवर्क व्हाट डू यू से द फ्लेमिंग मंडल मॉडल इफेक्टिवनेस ऑफ मॉनेटरी policy under flexible exchange now we are talking about uh, the system where exchange rate is flexible flexible exchange rate system okay we'll be discussing effectiveness if uh, exchange rate is fixed right uh, because the flexibility of exchange rate will matter a lot to see whether monetary policy is effective or not so to explain uh, the effectiveness of monetary policy uh, let us consider the four panel diagram uh, given as follows uh, i will be constructing this diagram and explaining you people the uh, effectiveness of monetary policy in an open economy uh, let us consider a four panel diagram in which we have the same four panel diagram which we we were making uh, yesterday in last lecture to explain the situation of bp curve the same four panel diagram we'll be constructing uh, today also I have four panels uh, here. Uh, okay, first of all, let us mark these panels. This is panel A. Uh, this one is panel B. Right. This one is panel C. And here we have panel D. Right. Uh, obviously what we will be having uh, right now is the situation of a target that is the initial equilibrium okay uh, to get the initial equilibrium uh, what i will be doing i will be deriving one is curve okay one is curve i am driving uh, that is let it be is With exchange rate E naught, this is my IS curve for given exchange rate E naught. Okay, uh, IS curve. Uh, now let me mark the axis first. That is interest rate, level of income. Hope you know uh, level of income. and level of income because change in axis uh, we have y here in exchange rate here e here we have r and exchange rate e uh, we have net exports to uh, net exports we have nx curve nx is equal to 0 here okay uh we have an ff curve for the flows curve for uh, level of income why not okay This is the first curve for the flows curve, uh, the net exports curve. Uh, then we have, uh, you know, let us consider a point, initial point of equilibrium. This is my L M, and this is the B P curve. Okay, uh, this is my L M for M naught, L M curve. For given money supply M naught and BP curve, BP for exchange rate E naught, right? Initial equilibrium is at say point P. 
okay at point p where uh, level of income is this much y not r not is the interest rate that this r not interest rate uh, exchange rate e not is there okay obviously we will be having a 45 degree line here to reverse the axis okay uh, it's a 45 degree line so i will be drawing a line here uh, so, 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 so i think we have done some mistake uh, the mistake is the derivation of an x curve it must be as per Just a minute, let me do the correction. Yeah, uh, now it's okay. Yes. I can move from here to here. Y0 level of income and my NX curve must pass through this point. Yeah. Right? This is an x is equal to zero. This is an x is equal to zero. Now I have equilibrium at point P, okay, and at this point P, the FF curve, uh, the rate of interest is R naught, and level of income is Y naught. Okay, and this y naught is converted to y axis from x axis to panel D. Okay, and this y naught is coming here, and this is the given exchange rate E naught, and E naught is coming here. right so point p and point q is the point for you know current account balance right so this is the condition of autarky uh, when economy is in equilibrium is lm and bp curve are intersecting at point p so since uh, uh, the P is at BP curve, LM curve, IS curve. So domestic equilibrium is there, foreign market equilibrium is there. Uh, what happens? Suppose the money supply rises, uh, say to M1, okay, and it causes a shift in LM curve, like suppose an increase in money supply causes LM curve to shift upward, or uh, shift downward, or uh, rightward. From LM M naught to LM M one, LM M one. I am assuming that price level is given uh, and it remains constant because if it will remain constant, then only increase in money supply will cause increase in real money supply. Okay. So let us suppose money supply rises from M naught to M one, then equilibrium the domestic equilibrium. Shifts to point M. Okay, then domestic equilibrium shifts to point M. Are you getting my point? Or should I write each and everything? Uh, so we can say that the point number one initial equilibrium is at point P where IS 
is equal to ln is equal to bp means three curves are intersecting each other the second observation is as money supply rises due to expansionary monetary policy okay assuming general price level as constant right the ln curve shifts from ln m naught to ln m1 is there any any problem in in this elaboration the third observation point m is temporary equilibrium where is is equal to lm however at m there exists pp deficit because m lies to the right of pp curve hope you remember the uh, situation of balance of payment curve the fourth observation due to deficit in deficit in bp in balance of payment okay that is bp less than 0 the exchange rate the exchange rate the exchange rate will increase as currency will depreciate okay with it because my quality of uh, balance of payment is not good that's why my currency will depreciate and exchange rate will increase as exchange rate rises as exchange rate rises tell me what would be the effect on bp curve hmm bp curve will shift to right and is curve will also shift right to bp e1 and is e1 respectively okay so for example uh, what will happen this due to this depreciation exchange rate will change when exchange rate will change your is curve has to shift to say is i1 and at this is i1 your bp curve will also be shifting to bp e1 okay uh, we can write here like is e1 and this would be bp e1 Okay, the mm -hmm. final equilibrium will be established at point C N. Okay, if 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 I derive these lines, at N level of income is higher, 
the rate of interest is comparatively lower fine uh, we can mark this here the net exports line I will have to extend Net exports line uh, here it it is coming out to be the new exchange rate this much E1 E1 is the new exchange rate and this is exchange rate and obviously new exchange rate and interest rate will give us new FF curve at higher level of income. Right. This is the new FF curve, basically FFY1. Uh, you may observe that earlier it was R0, now it's R1. Okay. Why not? Y1 income has increased to Y1 Y1 okay obviously it is going to new axis Y1 so you may observe that uh, means at new equilibrium when monetary policy is exercised uh, what happens due to increased money supply the level of income rises okay uh, from Y0 to Y1, rate of interest has fallen from R0 to R1. Uh, income has increased from Y0 to Y1 and due to this increase in income, uh, we are getting, uh, you know, We are getting some uh, surplus in net exports because exchange rate has also uh, increased. Okay, as exchange rate has increased, the new combination of increased income uh, and new exchange rate, or uh, obviously higher exchange rate is there. So, uh, new income and exchange rate is giving us some surplus. Let it be point R. We have to show some, some, some surplus in this account. Uh, my surplus uh, has to be shown here. If we had been at point M, then lesser 
income could have been generated with a higher decline in interest rate. Okay. Uh, At this level, surplus in current account would have been greater uh, because increase in income would have been lesser. Uh, you can observe, let it be Y2. Y2 is the income in domestic equilibrium. Okay. Fine. Y2. Is the income in which is lesser than obviously since but declining interest rate is more at at point m since is curve has increased so some investment has been some uh, rate of interest has increased because of some private investment has been crowded out okay uh, why true R is the level of surplus generated in means the triangle R is the surplus generated in uh, you can see that uh, this brown area is surplus in uh, current account that has been generated because of uh, expansionary monetary policy since income is greater and exchange rate is <laughs> higher even here some surplus may be made present, no doubt. Uh, that surplus I couldn't show here. Okay. This is exchange rate E2. Uh, E1. E2. Okay. Uh, since exchange rate has increased at higher rate uh, because BP has also moved downward. Ultimately, we can say that uh, no, earlier exchange rate was E naught, E naught, yes. So, but if the fifth is uh, an exchange rate rises, BP curve will shift to right, and IS curve will also shift to right uh, to BP E1 and I. As E1 respectively, uh, let us have further elaborations. Six at new equilibrium in the income is higher. Exchange rate is higher, and so and so the current account. will improve a little bit because exchange rate has increased at a high rate okay exchange rate has increased at a high rate seventh Income is higher, exchange rate is higher, uh, then decline in interest rate from R naught to R1, and so the private investment will also be induced okay since interest rate is lower private investment will be induced
exchange rate is higher and so the currency has depreciated depreciated because of currency has depreciated because of expansionary monetary policy in a flexible exchange rate and partial mobility of capital religion right so but these are the major conclusions you may note down the important one important one most important one are the finally most important conclusions are number a a depreciation in currency number b increase in income c reduction in interest rate and d is improvement in current account okay so these are the main four conclusions of of exercising expansionary monetary policy in a flexible exchange rate and partial mobility of capital regime if you have any problem you people can discuss kyun bachcho is there any problem if you want me to redraw the diagram i can also redraw the diagram choice is yours So I assume that uh, concept is clear to everyone. So how the monetary policy is affected? Yes, sir. Okay, okay, okay. So uh, now today I am uh, stopping the uh, presentation. Tomorrow we will be discussing effectiveness of fiscal policy in uh, uh, flexible exchange rate and partial mobility of capital regime. And uh, now I will be taking your attendance.